is IPv6. Now IPv6 is not our concern because it will still take time to get IPv6. But one thing you need to understand is IPv4 is basically 32 bit. Whereas IPv6 is way, way big actually, which is actually 128 bit. Okay. Now, um, I mean, during the starting of my career, like from for past 15 years, they keep on saying that when IPv4 is gone, IPv, the future is IPv6 only, that future is not yet came. So for now, we're going to put our concentration on IPv4. Yeah. Now, see, any IP address in IPv4 should uh, be between this one too. You take any IP address guys. It should be between 0 and 255 to be precise. What happened is they have divided this IP addresses into five different classes. So what are those five different classes? If I go here. If I go here, I'm going to say as IP address classes actually. And if you see these are the five classes and it really really don't need to know all these things but what's the point everything is a knowledge so i'm going to copy this these are the five classes i'm going to paste it here now what you need to understand is uh, as for as a civilians right or normal people we can only use class a class b and class c so you really don't need this class d and e okay so you really don't need this class C and D. So let me remove all these unnecessary things. Now that, that this this makes us uh, we can say like you take any type of IP address in the whole world. It should be any website. It should be in these three classes. Just just try to verify it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type okay uh, NS lookup www.google.com and what is the IP address you're going to get? If you see, you're getting in 216. Check it out, guys. 216, 239, 117. So it is 216 in class C IP address. Okay. So NS lookup. Uh, NS lookup, for example, portal.azure.com, for example. Now, if you see it is 52 which is in class a guys okay let's try to use the portal uh, aws.amazon.com yeah aws.amazon.com so if you see here this is how it will be it will be like uh, 99 which is actually in again class a like this any sort of ip addresses will be fall under class a b and c now there is a problem with this one the problem here is uh, the, the people who manage this IP address is IANA. I think Numbers Association, IA International, something full form. This is just Google it. This these guys manage it, and they have realized that okay, if I start if we start giving people public IPs just like that, imagine if you take Bangalore, right? In Bangalore, you have Manjata Tech Park, which I worked earlier. So if you say like like they have like half of the thing is occupied by IBM anyway. So like thousands of people, maybe some 50,000 people or one lakh people work there. So if I everyone uses a laptop on a desktop nowadays, we have a bonus of having mobile phones as well. If everyone was being hand over with a public IP, these public IPs are gone long back. So what they have realized is this is not the way because it can it can cause a major issues. So what we do is if the people are inside the office actually they should use a different ip addresses if the servers are in, inside the cloud right they should use a different ip addresses okay but when you they are going out they need to use a different ip addresses so that is why what will happen is they have introduced a concept called private ips actually now this is actually represent as rfc 1918 actually when you google for rfc 1918 which is a request for change basically let me go here if i go 1918 address allocation for private subnets that is what they are saying actually what exactly they meant is if i go to images what they did was they have removed a set of ip addresses from each each range okay if you see this one So what they did was they basically removed uh, come on 
the, these are the five classes but if i go for the yeah this one yeah this one so if you see they have removed a set of ip addresses saying that ct saying private non routable ip address they say private non routable ip address and they are saying rfc 1918 now these are the ranges starting from 10.2 to 10.255 170 16 to 172 31 and 190 to 168 uh, this range they have removed and what they did was these are the ips they removed so they are going to say private ip now this is important to understand because you are not going to use a lot of public ip guys but every day you are going to use the private ips in the cloud or in your data center so private ip range is which is 10.x.x.x .x .x. if i say 10.x.x.x .x 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 to 10.255.255.255 .255 .255 similarly what will happen here if you take the private ip range from here for this one it will be 172 16 0 .0 to 172.31.0.0 guys similarly in the private uh, private range for class c will be 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.25168 sorry now that is the reason whenever you see check your uh, check your laptop ip address in your home right it will always ends with 192 because the router uh, your wireless router is is configured in such a way you always get 192 and that is the one another reason where if you go to the offices right most probably you will see all your servers are operating at 172 or once most probably it will be 10 dot only guys most properly so in your cloud or in your uh, in your office you not only going to use 10 dot because the number of ip addresses you're going to get simply put see if you use 10 dot ip addresses you will get somewhere like somewhere like like 1.6 million ip addresses okay 1.6 million of ip that means 1 crore 67 lakh something whereas if you use class b you get somewhere like uh, you you get somewhere like 65000 ips whereas in class c you are going to get somewhere like 254 or 55 ips which will be so what will happen is so uh, so, no, sorry guys, you will get all 65,000 IPs, but this is not used actually. This is used for only for uh, not many companies use this. You use these two and you know in our class, we're going to use uh, Class A always always class A. That's why in the picture You still I use 10 dot and 172 16. I never use 192 once you can use it technically But if you want to simulate a real time, it will be always 10 dot or 172 16 guys Okay now Let's understand the subnetting here before that one. What is this private? Why it is called as non routable IP? That is important. They call this private ranges as non routable IP address, right? You have seen it private non routable address. What is that mean? Now if I take a picture Draw a picture here Now imagine your home actually uh, in your home imagine this is your home you have like if nowadays everybody has smartphones as well as laptops let me take my example at any given point of time in my home i have some three laptops working so let me take like this so i'll take three laptops working and you also have everybody have a mobile phones you have smartphones so if you take this in this way i i myself have somewhere like six devices in my home right so what I can do I require six public IPs imagine the people who are using in offices how many public IPs are required So what they did is they have introduced this RFC 1918 saying that one you need to use private IP addresses internally So what will happen inside? I'm going to use all for example 10.1.0.0 .0 .0 Arrange actually so what I'm trying to say is so the IP addresses is something like imagine 10.1.1. Hold on. So like this, so I have some IP addresses configured in such a way like this. For example, something like this. Okay. Now 
these are all private IP addresses. Now, what I normally take an analogy or example is see anything apart from these private ranges, everything is a public IP address. So, what is a public IP? What is a private IP? Okay. So, what is a public IP and what is a private IP? Now, public IP is similar to, and I, I think I think we are all we all passed uh, our graduation. So, in the graduation, what will happen is imagine. You have a hall ticket guys normally if you, in exam time you will have a hall ticket But normally when you when in your class right you have an attendance for example my roll number uh, is 56 for example in the class Okay, my roll number is 56 actually now if I go to the exam right if I say my roll number is 56 will it work for you? I don't think so. Why? Because there are a lot of other colleges people are coming in the roll number is still 56 only right? So what will have we have a hall ticket number here? We have a hall ticket number Right, so which is a unique number basically see public because the hall ticket imagine there are 10 lakh people taking the exam Everybody will have a different hall ticket number. It's a uniqueness So similarly if you have like a thousands or millions of servers around the world every server uh, Will have a public IP. It will be unique. So no server will have the same public IP Okay now what will happen public IP is similar to hall ticket number it is valid if you go for exam It is valid if you go for internet It is valid But if you take your private roll number which is 56 and your private IP example 10.1.100 for example And try to access internet what will happen is the, the uh, when the traffic is sent right so the internet is going to ignore you guys very simple if the traffic comes from 10.1.1 they're going to say we're not going to accept the traffic and uh, your internet service provider router says that one sorry not allowed so the packet will be dropped so how can we solve the problem how we, but how you are able to access internet the magic is done by your wireless wi-fi modem in real time you have router system basically i'm going to say like modem or router now this modem and router has a unique functionality called as network address translation short form nat it called as translation which is network address translation which is nat now <clears throat> how exactly it work is imagine you have your isp provider here sorry you have your isp provider here that means who gives the internet line actually i'm going to give isp it may be vodafone geo whatever it is and you have the internet because obviously through the isp only you will connect to internet right from their infrastructure only you'll go and connect to the internet basically if you see here now what will happen what exactly is happened this isp provider whenever they give you the connection they will give you a public ip guys okay so for example if i go here type ip config let me show it to you how it works but type ip config it is saying that when i have public ip i have a private ip address of 10.004 but when i'm communicating communicating with the internet that is not my if i go here uh, type what is my ip address right let me show it to you What is my IP? my IP address is 137 same right if I go here if I show you the Virtual machines So it is the same IP which uh, assigned to me um, See 137 35 84 the same IP ending with 121 This is the world the world sees my server as this like the using this IP So what exactly is happening? Even you are using 10 dot network. So your modem when ISP provider will give you some something called as a public IP so public IP uh, public IP I'm going to say as 89 dot something some IP now what this router will do is imagine the 10.1.1.101 uh, this one is trying to access internet google.com the traffic will send to the modem what more modem will do is it will do a network address translation that means it will convert this into a public ip send the traffic then isp say okay it is coming from a valid ip and it will actually send to internet and while the while i'm get while well, actually i'm getting the response right response will come like this 
to this public IP and it will again convert and send back here So the modem will have a record of who is asking and where it is natting and all these details This is how We are actually using the private IP you are able to access the internet That is how it works because your your modem is or your router will be doing the network address translation Using that one you are actually able to reach out to the internet Any questions here guys are we clear? What exactly happening from private to public? <clears throat> okay. Now this is basically happening in every cloud. You take AWS, you take Azure, GCP, doesn't matter, X Y cloud, it will happen in every cloud. Only thing is you won't be able to see this modem and router. That is why check it out. If this is here, if I try to ping it ping uh, www.google.com it is pinging so how exactly it is pinging how do what is happening if i if i type ip config it is sending to this this is default gateway which is actually the router this router is actually performing the nat for me okay now so now i'm going to do some subnetting actually uh, which is a little confusing guys but um, Let's try to understand imagine if somebody comes and says 10.1.0.0 and someone says that how many IP addresses you will get from this network What will be your answer? So you should say So you can't really say anything why because you need to have the subnetting basically So if somebody asks this question, I'll say that this is not a right question So the part of the question is missing the part is what is your subnet? now for example here or I can put something like this instead of zero. I'm going to give zero I have 10.0.0.0 Either I should ask what are the maximum IP address? I'm going to get that is a valid question if I say how many IP addresses I'm going to get it's not a valid question because Right now if I give a subnet something like this if I give 255.0.0.0 .0 If I give this subnet then this will give you 1.67 million IP addresses Okay But if I give a subnet 255.255.0.0 this will give you somewhere like 64,000 IPs Whereas if I give 255.255.255.0 then this will give you somewhere like 255 IP addresses So what you need to understand is the subnet is the one which actually manages how many IP addresses you are going to get It is not the 10 dot or network ID that is called network ID basically normally the subnetting will decide how many IPs you're going to get So that is why what we need to do is we need to understand how this subnetting works now Let me tell you Every IP address for example 10.1.1.100 .1 each one is an octet guys That means you have eight bits here here a here 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 Combining everything you will get 32 bit IP address. That is what I told right? So if I go here I said IPv4 is a 32 bit how I got 32 bit that's because Each one is basically eight bits. What are those eight bits? You can ask me you can ask me this also saying that who actually decided to go maximum of 25 255 Why can't it be 300 that is? Because of this one so imagine I said each one is eight bits, right? What are those eight bits the eight bits is zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 double zero One zero one 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 zero one if I count it one two three four five six seven eight so you have totally eight bits and if you do the math it will be like this two to the power of I don't remember exactly guys, but it will come like uh, two, two to the power of uh, you will get it four Eight Sixteen Thirty two Sixty four One twenty eight This is if you do the math everything you end up with two five five you end up with this 255 right you end up with everything now what will happen let me tell you 
if in, in the 10.000 right i gave 2550 how exactly i got 6.66 million of ip addresses 